Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay in Washington. In Syria, the repression continues to intensify. In the town of Banyas, the northern town in Syria, where reports are tanks are surrounding the town and 30 members of the ruling Ba'ath Party from Banyas have resigned in protest of what they say is live fire on demonstrators. And this is just one of the cities that seems to be on fire. Not literally, but in terms of intensity. Now joining us to talk about the current situation in Syria is Bassam Haddad. He's director of the Middle East Studies Program at George Mason University. He's on the editorial committee of Middle East Report. He's co-founder of the Middle East web information site, jadalia.com. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So talk about what's been going on in the last few days, and let's talk what it, you know, the con what it all means. Uh, you know, I think uh, as I uh, have been discussing since last week, we are entering a different phase in the confrontation in Syria between the regime and the protesters, where the uh, stakes are uh, very high and where the regime has begun to resort to uh, tactics, uh, coercive tactics that include uh, tanks and uh, much heavier gunfire, uh, of course, live bullets. And uh, that started on Friday, uh, last Friday, which was called Great Friday by the protesters, also referring to the uh, uh, Christian Easter uh, holiday that's called Great Friday in, in, in Arabic. Uh, that began a, uh, uh, the escalation whereby the regime killed uh, more than 100 people. Uh, of course, uh, that is the uh, news from uh, the protesters and the, and the critical uh, uh, media. The regime has another story, but even if one uh, has to uh, adjust for uh, exaggerations here and there, the bloodshed on Friday has been unprecedented. After that, we saw the regime surround the city of Dara'a in the south and cut off water, electricity, and roads coming in and out of Dara'a, sending in tanks into uh, the city and uh, basically arresting or detaining a lot of the uh, supposed protesters. Now, let, let me ask you about the significance of the uh, 30 members of the Ba'ath Party from Banyas resigning. Does this, do you think, represent a schism that's more broadly might be felt throughout the Ba'ath Party nationally, or do you think it's something more local? I think you will find that in the coming days uh, there will be much more resignations. These resignations refer to uh, the portion of the Syrian society that is likely to respond to these uh, 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 killings and to the violence in this manner. However, uh, at, as you go up in the Syrian hierarchy of power, you will find that these resignations will, uh, will not exist. Uh, most of these resignations will take place at uh, the lower uh, rank and file in the party, bureaucracy, and the army. Once you get to the regime itself and the security services and the top ranks in the army, it is very unlikely at this point to see serious splits, and if we do see them, they're going to be minimal. There might be more serious splits as the level of violence by the regime becomes threatening to the regime itself. That's when we might see schisms at the top. Now, but, that, there were reports you know, from WikiLeaks, the New York Times released some of this, and there's been uh, Assad himself has been saying this. That, that there's been a lot of outside influence, U.S. Uh, finance, uh, financing of the opposition. Uh, how do you parse out what might actually be uh, from outside involvement from what's more just indigenous domestic up popular uprising? Most of what we are seeing is domestic, uh, the overwhelming majority. The external support exists in uh, ways that are uh, not material, uh, with the exception of a couple of cases where there is support from the U.S. for a uh, television channel. But that is not something that's going to uh, change the game. Uh, there are other television channels that have nothing to do with the external uh, U.S. support or external European support that are already uh, doing the job. And they include, uh, of course, Al Jazeera, but they also include Syrian satellite and television channels or Syrian-owned that uh, have an interest in uh, revealing what is happening. And usually, of course, you will find a lot of exaggeration here and there. I think the regime uh, is focusing on the exaggeration and ignoring the core of the demands of the people and the core of the actual uh, narrative, the reality. 
so you could focus on the excesses and, and, and the uh, exaggerations, but that by no means uh, detracts from the fact that most of what's being reported is not actually uh, 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 illegitimate, and it's not a puzzle that a good number of Syrians and the majority of Syrians uh, live under uh, a repressive sort of rule. President Assad, and, and to some extent you see some of this in the Western media, that Assad stands as sort of a bulwark uh, between secularism and Islamic extremism. And of course, he has been blaming a lot of the uprisings on Islamists. It, it, take a town like Banyas, uh, which is now surrounded by tanks and all these 30 resignations, apparently, from the Ba'ath Party. Is this some kind of center of Islamism? No. No, it's not. I mean, uh, the, uh, the, the word Islamism I mean, we need to to break it down a little bit, and uh, the, the, I mean, it could include the word Islamist or Islamism can include any number of groups, many of which uh, are uh, have values and aspirations and principles that are shared by the majority of not just Syrians but people around the world. It also is, resonates in the American mainstream public. Uh, that you know that is the the fear of the Islamists, and that unfortunately becomes a story and detracts from or uh, uh, basically distracts us from the the, the real uh, story that's taking place in Syria right now, which is the popular uprising against uh, against a regime that has been exclusionary and the recently economically uh, the situation has been deteriorating in Syria for some time. The only uh, uh, positive aspect of the 40 some years of the Ba'athist rule, according to many, is the coming of Bashar Assad in 2000. But that also left a lot of people in, a, uh, in, in, in despair because they have not seen the promises uh, unfold, the ones that he made in 2000. Thanks very much for joining us, Bassam. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.